Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Going, going, gone. That's the way Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice disappears at breakfast time. These ready-to-serve cereals hit the spot from last to first delicious spoonful. Yes, wheat or rice shot from guns has exploded up to eight times normal size to make it crisp and tender. Tomorrow morning, fill a bowl with Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Top with fruit. Like, say, sliced bananas. Add milk or cream and sugar. Talk about swell tasting. Say, just you watch it disappear. But fast. Charlotte Brown and her husband Sam had worked in carnivals in the States all their lives as knife throwers. But when the big news came from the Yukon... The two thought they'd like to follow the strike. Together with Charlie's father, they came north, but not to dig for gold. Gold came to them in Charlie's restaurant on Main Street in Reindeer City. Charlie served the best meals in town, and her place was always crowded. It was full of miners, trappers, and townsmen when Jack Barlow started an argument. Barlow had half interest in the cafe in town. He also had a mean disposition, and he respected no one, man or woman. Look, if you can't act like a gentleman, Jack Barlow, take your business someplace else. I didn't think you could recognize a gentleman, Charlie. Or should I say Charlotte? To you, I'm Mrs. Brown. Now go on, get out of here. I paid for my meal and I'm staying here till I eat it. Well, we'll see about that. Hey, Barlow, you better duck. Charlie's got a skillet. When I say get, I mean get. Hey, what the... You missed him, Charlie. Hey, you're lucky that didn't hit you, Barlow. So, you want to play rough, Mrs. Brown? I can accommodate you, all right? Jack Barlow picked up the heavy cast iron skillet and was about to throw it when a knife flew from Charlie's hand and pinned Barlow's upraised arm to the wall. While his arm was unhurt, the blade of the knife pinned his sleeve securely to the wooden wall. Now drop that skillet, you cheap card sharp, or I'll put the next knife right through your heart. Charlie, you'll regret throwing that knife. Nobody makes a fool out of me and gets away with it. You and your threats don't scare me, none, Barlow. You're just doggone lucky my husband Sam wasn't here when you aimed to heave that skillet. Why, he'd have killed you. Now get out. I told you before and I'm... Oh, Sergeant Preston, I didn't see him come in. It's a doggone good thing he's here. This is none of your business. Ah, but then maybe it is. Sergeant Preston, this woman just threw a knife at me. I demand that you put her in jail. It's lucky for me she didn't cut my arm off. Look, if I'd wanted to cut your arm off, I wouldn't have made no mistake. Next time, I'll aim different. If there's any next time, you'll have more trouble on your hands than you can handle. Yeah, and that goes for your husband and father, too. I'll get all three of you. I'll run you out of this town. Stop big enough for all Oh, yes. Barlow, you're in no condition to be reasonable. But I'm telling I'm you... I'm going she... to put you in jail overnight and give you a chance to cool off. Well, that's a good idea, Sergeant Preston. If Jack is free to roam the town in this present mood, he'll get into trouble. Amos, that's a fine way for my own partner to talk. What's the idea? Now, now, Jack, it's for your own good. I'll have a talk with you in the morning. Perhaps then you'll feel differently. You may realize it's wiser to stay away from places where you're not wanted. I can crack. Here, Here, Sergeant. You want me? Yes, put this man in jail. I'll lock him up, Sergeant. Come on, Barlow. I'll uh, send a pot of coffee over for you, Zach, to help keep you awake. That's mighty nice of you, Mr. West. I'll be downright obliged. Now get moving, Barlow. Get out of here. Thanks for getting Barlow out of here, Sergeant Preston. I'll try to see that he gives you no more trouble. He'd better not. 
You gents want a meal? You yeah. bet we do, Charlie. <laughs> hey. You know, uh, Charlie's the best cook in the Yukon, oh, Sergeant. That's right. <laughs> Say, Charlie, how about selling out to me? I can relieve you of all the problems of ownership. <laughs> now, uh, hold on, Amos. I've told you before, my place isn't for sale. Well, then, how about a partnership? I've, I've got to do something. Ever since you opened up, I've lost practically pay all of my restaurant business. No one orders food at my place. Why, even I come over here to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so does your partner, Barlow. But I wish he wouldn't. You know, he must figure if he makes things tough enough for me that I'll leave town. Every time he comes in here, I have trouble with him. Well, I've tried to keep away, Charlie. Oh, I know you've done your best, Amos. But he's stubborn. Well, if he don't stop deviling me, I'll put a knife through his heart. You don't mean that, Charlie. Oh, but I do mean it, Sergeant. If Sam ever finds out how he pesters me, Sam will kill him. And the law will hang Sam for that. You're not serious, Charlie. I don't believe there's a jury in the territory that'd hang a woman for killing a man like Barlow. And I'm telling you right now... If I have any more trouble with him, I'll let him have it. Charlie, I'll try to see that Barlow gives you no more trouble, but let me give you a word of advice. Yes, Sergeant? Don't try taking the law into your own hands. It was about 11.30 that night when Zach Thomas sent for Sergeant Preston to come to the jail at once. What is it, Zach? Here, go right over and take a look. You'll see. Barlow seems to be sleeping peacefully enough. Great Scott, he's been stabbed. That's just the way I found him, on his side, with a knife in his back. No one could have stood at this door and thrown that knife. No, but someone could have stood outside the window and thrown it. With bars on the outside and oilskin covering the inside? Oh, no. That oilskin's not fastened down, Sergeant Preston. See? See here, just fastened at the top. Could have been moved aside. That's possible, but unlikely. You sure no one's been in that cell with Barlow? Yes, sir, I'm sure. Silently, Sergeant Preston withdrew the murder weapon, examined it, wrapped it in a handkerchief, and put it in his pocket. Then he gave Zack instructions about the body. I'll take care of it, Sergeant. Oh, uh, you care for a cup of coffee? I can heat that up for you if you'd like some. No, thanks, Zack. I'm going over to talk to Charlie Brown. When Sergeant Preston and the great dog King reached Charlie's living quarters, they found Sam seated in front of the fire. What's the trouble, Sergeant? Sam... Where have you been this evening? I was doing some hunting today. I just got back half an hour ago. Anyone come into town with you? No, I was alone. See anyone you knew? Not that I can think of. A lot of strangers around. Why? What's wrong, Sergeant? Where have you been all evening, Charlie? Oh, here at home. Had any company? No. My dad's here, but he's been in his room sleeping since 8 o'clock. You looking for someone? I'm looking for a murderer. murderer. Look at this knife, Charlie. Who was killed? Jack Barlow was murdered tonight with this knife. What? Do you recognize it, Charlie? Well, that's my knife. I thought so. I'm the man you want, Sergeant. Oh? What? Sam! I'm sorry, Charlie. But Sergeant Preston would have found out sooner or later. Are you confessing to the murder of Jack Barlow? Yes. Oh, no, Sam. No. <laughs> Sergeant Preston took Sam Brown to jail and locked him in a cell... Then the Mountie examined the ground beneath the small cell window. But the earth was swept clean of snow and showed no footprints. Preston looked at the window that was really no more than an air vent. <laughs> Putting himself in the murderer's place, Preston reached through the bars and drew the oilskin covering aside. Even if Sam Brown is the best knife thrower in the world, it would have been almost impossible for him to hit Barlow from here. Can you see if you can find a scent here, right here under the window. That's it, boy. King sniffed at the ground, then looked up at his master. That's it, King. Get the scent and follow it. You find it, King? What's the matter, boy? Don't you understand? Well, come on. We'll go back to Charlie's and get a pair of Sam's boots. Once you get the scent from them, you'll know what you're looking for. But even that didn't help. King went to Brown's cabin and sniffed at Sam's boots. He returned with his master to the spot outside the cell window. What's wrong, King? King tried to tell his master there was no scent to follow. Sam may be covering for Charlie. Perhaps she was the one who stood here. Come on, boy. This time we'll get Charlie's boots. For the third time that night, Sergeant Preston and his dog went to Brown's cabin. Preston borrowed one of Charlie's boots, then went back to the jail with King. The great dog went around in circles. He knew what Sergeant Preston expected, 
King knew he was letting Preston down because he could find no scent. He didn't know where to go from the jail. There was nothing to follow. His ears were flat against his head, and his tail was down as he caught the note of disappointment and discouragement in Sergeant Preston's voice. All right, boy. I guess you've had enough of the workout for the night. We'll turn in. It was after two o'clock when the Mountie's dog headed toward the hotel. Preston hesitated to disturb Charlie again that night, so he took the boot he had borrowed to his hotel room with him. King curled to the side of Preston's bed, but the great dog didn't sleep. He nuzzled the boot from time to time and whimpered his bewilderment. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Well, sir, fellows and girls, I wonder if we're going to have a visitor today. Well, sure enough, we do have a visitor. A rather peculiar-looking one, too. Uh, judging by that odd cap you're wearing, that huge pipe, to say nothing of that magnifying glass in your hand, I'd say that you, sir, are a detective. Right, old boy. I'd say, too, that your name is, uh, Sherlock. Hmm, deucedly clever of you, old chap. Deucedly clever. I see. Well, tell us, what brings you here? Shh, don't tell a soul. I'm on the trail of something big, colossal. Well, what is it? It's, uh, uh... By Jove, I, I seem to have quite forgotten. Well, maybe I can help you remember. Is it something we all know about? Oh, quite. It's famous, you know. It's uh, delightfully edible and has something to do with some sort of a weapon. Oh, you say it's good to eat and it has something to do with a weapon? Listen. By Jove, that's it. It's ejected from guns. <laughs> oh, Sherlock, you mean shot from guns. right -o. Wheat or rice shot from guns. On my word, seems like there's another matter connected with a quadruped of some sort. Oh, you mean... right -o. I knew I'd track it down. I've been looking for the breakfast that's colossal. Wheat or rice shot from guns and topped with milk or cream and fruit. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, old chap. It must be running along now. Uh, pip, pip, and all that sort of thing. <laughs> well, sir, fellows and girls, don't forget. Wheat or rice shot from guns means just one thing. It means Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. It means the ready-to-serve breakfast cereal of king-size colossal grains of premium wheat or rice exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. Shot through and through with keen nut-like flavor, too. Bigger and better tasting. That's Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Just remember, the original crisp, fresh Wheat or Rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Be sure to ask Mom to get the famous big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Now to continue our story. In the morning, Sergeant Preston didn't stop for breakfast. He went directly to the jail and nodded briefly to the guard on duty who had relieved Zack. The great dog King was subdued and quiet as he watched his master place the tin coffee pot over the burner. Coffee isn't fresh, but I'll have it before I start to work. It'll do for a bracer. Uh, oh, hi there, Sergeant Preston. Uh, how are you? Fine, Zach. Care for some coffee? It'll be hot in a few minutes. Uh, no, thanks, Sergeant. Uh, that's left over from last night. I thought it was. Uh, I uh, just had breakfast at Charlie's. Oh. Uh, she's not there this morning. Her dad's doing the cooking. I see. Had any sleep? Uh, oh, no, no. After Slim relieved me, I thought I'd better stick around. Maybe you'll need me. Uh, say, that coffee's just about boiling. Oh. Sam, have anything to say this morning? Well, just that he killed Barlow. That's all? Uh, he's not too talkative. I see. You uh, figure they'll hang him? Yeah, it's up to a jury, Zach. Right? Yeah, someone must have told him Barlow almost threw a skillet at Charlie yesterday. So he killed Barlow by knifing him in the back? 
I don't think Sam's that kind of man, Zach. Well, he's quick-tempered. So's Charlie. Yeah. Yeah? In fact, Charlie's a whole lot quicker on the trigger than <sighs> Sam. Oh, uh, more coffee? There ought to be another cup left. No, thanks, Zach. One cup of stale coffee's enough. Sergeant Preston returned to the desk, took out some papers, and started to work. It's funny. I got enough sleep last night. Oh, uh, what's that, Sergeant? No, nothing, Zach. You know, I think I'll take these reports to the hotel. I can fill them out there. Are you sleepy, Sergeant? I shouldn't be, but I am. Monkey. <laughs> when he reached his hotel, Sergeant Preston sat down on the side of his bed. I think I'll rest a minute, King. Strange, I could hardly keep my eyes open. I don't understand. What it's like. It was almost two hours later. Charlie Brown was in Amos West's office in the back of his cafe. Amos, I want to get the best lawyer in the territory for Sam. That'll take plenty of money, Charlie. Yeah, I know. So, I'll sell out to you now. Now, Charlie, your interests are mighty important to me. I want to help you out. But frankly, your place isn't worth as much to me now as it was before. How much will you pay? Well, my original offer was $10,000. Now, I couldn't go higher than two. What? But by stretching a point in your account, I might make it three. Three thousand? To see Barlow's end of the business is in bad shape. But uh, I've got two thousand dollars tied up in equipment alone. Not many people up here are interested in business. Most of them want to dig for gold. It might be a little difficult to find a buyer right now, but uh, perhaps if you wait a few months, you'll get more for it. But I need the cash now. I'll give you the money immediately. Well, I've got to get money. That's the only way to do it. I, I'll sell. I'll draw the papers right away and pay you before you leave the office. Yeah. Then I'll send to Dawson for a lawyer. We uh, won't need any complicated legal papers. A transaction of this sort between friends. Uh, Dawson. I got to talk to you. Yeah. I went over to the jail to pick up that coffee pot so I could get rid of the drunk coffee, and I found out that Preston drank some of it this morning. He left the jail and went back to his hotel. Good. He must have been knocked out inside of 15 minutes, and when he comes to... Shut up! That... Oh, I didn't know anyone was in here. Well, you know it now. Drugged coffee at the jail. Pay no attention to Bruno, Charlie. He, Hold uh... on. That coffee went to Zach Thomas. If Zach was drugged, I why... I didn't mean to spill the beans, boy. You shut up. Now, Charlie... Amos, uh, I'm just beginning to savvy things. Bruno, close that door to the cafe. Yeah, boss. Yeah. You want me to leave, boss? No. Sam didn't kill Barlow. Why, if you knew that coffee was drugged, you could have opened the jail door when Zach was sleeping what and you could... What do boss? She knows. Amos West, you no good hypocrite. Barlow wasn't killed by a knife that was thrown. He was stabbed, and you did it. Easy, Charlie. Take it easy. Easy? You whitewashed four-flusher. Why, I ought to beat your fat, ugly face. Shut up. Don't you tell me to shut up, you... You murderer. So you were going to let my Sam hang for what you did. Sam confessed to murder. And you must have had a hand in that confession. Why, I'll show you, Amos West. Hey, look out, boss. Get in here. She's throwing things, out. boss. Doc, you grab her, Bruno. Out. I got her, boss. Get your filthy hands off me, you big pig. Get him off, you two-bit freak. Hold her, Bruno, till I get my gun. Hurry, oh, boss. Me. She's worse than a pack oh. of wildcats. All right, all right, let her go. Now, Charlie, I can shoot you, and Bruno will swear with self-defense. You drugged Zack, didn't you? Yes, Zack was drugged. If that was really quite simple. I merely called at the jail and left Bruno outside to see that no one came in. While you got the keys, unlocked the cell, and stabbed Barlow. Astute deduction, Charlie. Very astute. Barlow never knew what happened. He died without waking. It may be a little more difficult to dispose of you, but I promise you I shall dispose of you unless you decide to be agreeable. What do you mean, agreeable? I want you to sign over the restaurant. To you? You must think I'm crazy. Sign it over now, and I'll get you out of town at once and ship you back to the States. What about Sam? He confessed to murder. I can't do anything for him. But I'll send your father out with you. Why, if I sign my restaurant over to you, I'd be dead before the ink was dry. Charlie, I give you my word. Your word? 
Why, I've heard sideshow barkers that were a whole lot easier to believe than you are. You killed your own partner to get his share of this cafe. If you think I'm kidded into believing you'll be any different with me, you're crazy. You know, Charlie, Bruno could get you a father. What's my father got to do with this? You might be more agreeable if you see how painfully your stubbornness affects him. <gasps> you uh, don't want him to be hurt, do you? So be reasonable, Charlie. Just sign this paper. That's all you have to do. Sergeant Preston, wakened with difficulty, he fell as if he were fighting his way to consciousness. <laughs> Like a drowning man struggling to reach the surface, the body opened his eyes and finally grasped the reality of his surroundings. Uh, must have been asleep. Feels so dazed and loggy. He reached for his watch on a nearby table. What? I've been sleeping for two hours. Two hours. <laughs> King, old boy. I seem to have a headache. A sick headache. Felt fine when I got up this morning. He stood up, and as he did, a giddiness assailed him. With it came a sudden realization. Now I know what's wrong. I've been drugged before. I know the feeling, of course. That's it. I didn't stop for breakfast this morning, so it must have been that coffee I drank in the jail. Come on, boy. I'll get my park on. We're going to learn more about this. With King at his heels, Sergeant Preston hurried down Main Street to the jail. Zack was sitting in the office, and he had a troubled look on his face. Zack, where'd that coffee come from? Uh, uh, what coffee? Oh, uh... You mean uh, what you had this morning? Uh, well, that's what Amos West sent over last night. Did you fall asleep last night after drinking it? Uh, uh, well, uh... I won't hold it against you if you did. I had some of it this morning and I fell asleep. I think it's drugged. Sergeant, I'd been worried half to death about it. I didn't want to tell you I fell asleep for fear of losing my job. But I had about two cups of that. I never knew what hit me. I was dead to the world. I thought so. Uh, it's been bothering me. Was Sam likely to hang? I, well, I thought I ought to tell That's you... That's all but right, I... Zach. So it came from West Cafe, eh? Yes. Uh, where are you going? The sea West. Monking. Now, King, we'll call on Amos West and see who made that coffee for the jail. They've got to learn who had the chance to drug it. Since his failure to find the scent his master was looking for, King had been unusually quiet. He was ashamed that he hadn't been able to help Sergeant Preston. Meekly, he followed his master across the street toward Amos West's cafe. But as Preston headed toward the front door of the frame building, King suddenly stopped in his tracks. Come on, boy. Now, what is it, King? Come on, fellow. We can't waste time here. I've got to see Amos West. Instead of going to the front entrance of the cafe, King headed toward a private entrance in the rear. The great husky had suddenly found the scent Preston was looking for. Now he could follow Charlie Brown. King, come back here, King. Confound it. As Sergeant Preston approached Amos West's private entrance to the cafe, he saw his dog hurling himself against the door, scratching and clawing at the wood. King! Charlie! Charlie Brown! Open this door in the name of the law! Get away from the door, King. I'll open it in a hurry. Come on, King. Wait in, fellow. As Sergeant Preston and King came through the outside door, Jepson, another of West's henchmen, entered the office from the cafe. Amos West stood to the side with his gun drawn. Under gun, Preston. Big Bruno released his grip on Charlie Brown and charged toward the Mountie, while Jefferson snatched at a sneak dagger. <coughs> King had entered the room on the run and suddenly left the floor in a powerful leap. His full weight struck Amos West, and the big cafe owner went down. <coughs> Sergeant Preston and Big Bruno went at each other with hard fists, each man delivering smashing blows in an effort to overcome the other. Look out! Charlie saw Jefferson pull his daringer from his shoulder holster. I think Will's not as good as a knife, but it'll do... Jepson's shot went wild. The heavy bottle struck him on the forehead, and he slumped to the floor. Good work, Charlie. I'll get you, Mountie. That didn't get me, Brunner. This is for you. Here's another. Big Bruno doubled over as Preston's fist drove deep into his stomach. With lightning speed, the Mountie struck again. Bruno's head snapped back, and he was out of the fight for keeps. Good work, King. You kept Amos pinned to the floor where he couldn't do any harm. Call this dog off. Cut him off, I say. Tell him to get back. I will, after I pick up your gun. There. All right, King. Now get up, Amos. Uh, yes. You. Sergeant Preston, it was Amos that stabbed Barlow. He admitted it to me. He went to the jail with Bruno after he sent Zack that drug coffee. Yeah. Zack was sleeping when this polk had got the keys, opened the cell door, and let Barlow have it. Sergeant Preston. You shut up. I'm talking. I came here, Sergeant, to offer to sell my place so as I could get Sam a good lawyer. 
And that big dumb Bruno busted in and said you'd got a cup of the drug coffee. Then the whole story came out. Amos tried to force me to sign my restaurant over to him. He threatened to kill my father and me oh, if I didn't. Oh, my head's busted. What, what hit me? I'd like to hit you with a slab of granite. <laughs> it was Sergeant Preston that hit you, Bruno. Want some more fight? No. No, I give up. Don't hit me again. I, I, I admit I helped the boss. I helped him. I took coffee to Zach, but I didn't kill Barlow. I didn't. Amos West done it. Oh, I you didn't. shut up. Sergeant Preston, listen to me. You've got to give me a chance to explain. You'll I... have your chance in court, Amos. What about Sam, Sergeant? He didn't have anything to do with Barlow's kill, and I know he didn't. I'll release him when I take these three over to lock them up. That's Sam. Why do you suppose he ever admitted murder? Why do you suppose he lied like that? Unless Amos had some kind of a threat hanging over his head. No, no, I didn't. I, I think you'll find that Sam was shielding you, Charlie. You mean... You mean he thought I killed Barlow and he was taking the blame for me? Why, the big loot. You remember you threatened to take the law into your own hands. <laughs> how did you and King happen to come here just when I needed you most? King deserves the credit for that. But how? He followed you, Charlie. <laughs> yes, King, I should have understood, boy. I know now that there was no scent outside that window. But perhaps it was a good thing that we tried so hard to find it, because when you finally found Charlie's scent, you really went into action. <laughs> yes, boy, thanks to you, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Say, fellas and girls, don't forget, you now get swell new model farm cutouts on packages of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, you get complete models of farm buildings, farm animals, and farm equipment. Build your own model farm. There are 46 different detailed scale models in all on eight different packages. You get as many as six models to a single package. Remember, these keen, new, exciting models are yours today with packages of swell-tasting Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Lucky Shirt. The Lucky Shirt belonged to a man called Nifty Smith. He always wore it when he needed luck, and he used that shirt when he stole a fortune that King was guarding. That shirt gave off fumes that King could not combat. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. Boys and girls, who owns the best-looking dog in your neighborhood? Whose dog is always at his master's side? Well, I'll bet he eats kennel ration because feeding a dog kennel ration is mighty swell. Kennel ration is made with choice cuts of U.S. government-inspected horse meat and packed with vitamins and minerals. So start feeding your dog kennel ration today and watch for a thick, glossy coat, clear, bright eyes, and a playful, happy disposition. Have Mom get kennel ration at her favorite dealer today. Kennel ration, first in canned dog food. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>